this is Ruby. Today we're going to do a tea test. We have a researcher who's testing the effects of a new cold and flu medication on reaction time. They've chosen a sample of nine students and they're going to give each student a normal dose of the medication. And then 30 minutes later, they're going to measure that student's reaction time. So the sample's average for reaction time is equal to 211 milliseconds with the sum of the square deviations being 1,152 milliseconds. Now, assuming that reaction time for students in the regular population averaged 200 milliseconds, we wanna know is the data sufficient to conclude that the medication had a significant effect on reaction time. Please notice that this is going to be tested at the 0.05 level, and since the question asks, does it have a significant effect on reaction time, it's gonna be a two-tailed test. All right, and also notice that we do have a sample mean of 211 milliseconds and we have a population mean of 200 milliseconds. So that means that we already have a sample mean that suggests that it is taking longer with the cold and flu medication, that those individuals who took the cold and flu medication do have longer reaction times, but we're trying to see whether or not if those longer reaction times are statistically significant. Okay, so the first thing to do with the t-test is to write down the information you have. So you have that sample size equals nine, so nine equals, so n equals nine. You have that the sample mean equals 211 milliseconds. You have that the population mean equals 200 milliseconds. And you have the sum of the square de deviations equals 1,152 milliseconds. Now, that sum of square deviations, we need to compute that and have the sample standard deviation because that's what we're gonna be used when we uh, compute our t compute it, we're gonna be using the sample standard deviation. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to first compute the variance. And the way that we compute the variance is we take as the numerator 1,152, which is the sum of the square deviations, and we divide that by n minus one. So we have 1,152 milliseconds divided by eight, and we end up with 144. Then to get the sample standard deviation, we're gonna take the square root of 144, which equals 12. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna write out our step one, which is our null on our alternative hypothesis. So we have that the mu of the population is equal to 200, and that would be our null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis is that mu, and then we have subscript script of RT, which just means reaction time equals 200, and then for the alternative hypothesis, we have mu of reaction time does not equal 200. So essentially what we're saying is, if our uh, null hypothesis is um, supported, that we would not be able to reject because what we would be saying is that even though we did have a situation where uh, reaction time was increased, that it wasn't increased enough to be significantly different from what we would expect by chance. On the other hand, if we found that indeed there was an extreme score, and in this particular case, we'd be looking on the positive side, if there was an extreme score on the positive side, then we could say that indeed, uh, we would reject the null hypothesis because we have statistical significance, and we would accept the alternative that says reaction time is not equal to 200. All right, now for step number two, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for a T critical. And to find the t-critical, we're gonna to have to use the t-table. I will need a couple of pieces of information. Number one, we're gonna to need to know the degrees of freedom, which equals, in this case, n minus one. And so that's the sample size minus one, which is eight. We have our alpha level of 0.05, and it's a two-tailed test. So we'd go ahead and we draw that out, and we'd look at our t-table, which I'll show you in a minute, and we'd find a value of 2.306. Because it's two-tailed, we'll also need a value in the negative direction, which will be identical, which will be negative 2.306. What this means is, if our t-computed is greater than 2.306 or less than negative 2.306, it will fall into a statistically significant region or a critical area, and that will tell us that we have statistical significance. So our third step will be to actually to compute the t. So we see here that the t to compute it, the equation is, we're gonna take the sample mean minus the population mean over the estimated standard error. And the estimated standard error, s, which subscript m, the way that we compute it 
is we take the standard deviation and we divide that by the square root of n. So we have 12 and we divide that by the square root of 9 in this case because n equals 9. Then we get 12 over 3 and then we get 4. And then to compute the t, we have the sample mean is equal to 211, the population mean is equal to 200, and the estimated standard error is equal to 4. 11 divided by 4 equals 2.75. So our t computed is equal to 2.75. If we go back here to our drawing and we put in our t computed, we see quite easily that 2.75 lands in the rejection area. So we know that we have statistical significance. Now let's just take a quick look. Is We're just gonna real quickly look at the t distribution table so you know where I got the two point at that t table. And so if we look at that t table, which this is right here, what we're going to be looking for is, first of all, we want the proportion and two tails combined. So we don't want the first row, but we want the second row. And we're going to look across the second row until we find 0.05. Once we find 0.05, then what we're going to do is we're going to look for our degrees of freedom, which was eight. And so we have eight, and we're going to look across the eighth row and then we're going to look down the 0.05 column and we find that our value is 2.306. So this is where we got our critical value. And because it's two tails, as we talked about before, um, we're going to have on the right hand side will be a positive 2.306 and on the left hand side will be a negative 2.306. All right, now the fourth step is we have 2.75. The computed t is larger than t critical of 2.306. So you know you have statistical significance, you can reject the null hypothesis, and you can accept the alternative. So that would be your final answer for step four, to reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative because you have statistical significance. Now what this means is that when you reject the null hypothesis, what you're saying is that that statement that the population mean equal 200 is false. And it's false because what we found was that our reaction time of 211 for our particular sample was way out in the tails. So because of that, we can accept our alternative hypothesis and we can say that is true. Then for step number five, we're just going to put this into words. People, people have a statistically significant increase in reaction time when they use cold or flu medication. So uh, this means that the reaction time would increase, that uh, might be dangerous for certain jobs or driving. And then the last part of this would be to measure our treatment effect. And remember that we can have a statistically significant result and it might have a small treatment effect, a medium treatment effect, or a large effect size. Um, having statistical significance does not necessitate that you will have a large effect size. So um, notice that our equation for Cohen's d is d equals m minus mu, and that's divided by your sample standard deviation. We've taken out n from this, and the reason we take out sample size is because sample size can manipulate effect size. So what we have then is the um, sample mean, which is 211, minus the population mean, which is 200, divided by 12. So we have 11 divided by 12, which equals 0.916, so if we round that, our answer is 0.92. So that would mean we have a large effect size. All right, so that's it for this problem, and I hope that was helpful, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.